today we are talking about instrumental pieces or uh, albums and, and your top instrumental artists. I have very little to add to this, so they let me intro the video because this will likely be the last time I talk. <laughs> That's not true, you just came up with one. I did, I did, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's let's go, up with it. Yeah. yeah, come on, strong. Yeah, we'll Gentlemen, all right, so um, I don't honestly listen to a whole lot of instrumental uh, music. I, I'm a big lyrics guy. Right on. So, But uh, when I do listen to instrumental music, it's usually soundtracks to things. Mm. Okay. And that counts. Okay. To me, that counts. Absolutely, it does. It does. I mean, uh, if it's instrumental, it doesn't say... Yeah. yeah so right. I'm actually going to start this off with Batman Returns soundtrack. Oh! There you go. It is the most, like, Tim Burton-y goth shit ever. Well, just Danny Elfman, period. Yeah. yeah. Danny Elfman, you but can't I mean, stop Danny Elfman. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I like Oingo Boingo and shit. Yeah. yeah. I love yes. Danny Elfman. I love everything Danny Elfman's yes. ever done. But Hell I mean, yes. like... Hell yeah. Specifically, the Batman Returns soundtrack, like, almost defined what, like, goth instrumental was. Side note, that is my favorite Batman movie. It's a Batman great movie. Batman Returns, really? Also, a it's fucking a Christmas, movie. Christmas movie. It yeah. is definitely a Christmas <laughs> movie. It is, fair enough, fair enough. To, to, me, to me, it's the darkest Batman movie there. It I is, the, it is yeah. the darkest movie. I absolutely movie. I would agree. And Tony DeVito crushed it. Yeah. And Michelle Pfeiffer made me a man. Uh, I like Jack Nicholson <laughs> Joker Batman better, but that I won't say that. I, that I, is I, the I, darkest one. Yeah. See, well, that's a great movie. Yeah. I actually, I was, I was struggling with this because while Prince has a soundtrack for right. Batman, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Danny <laughs> yeah, Elfman's Batman Returns Bad soundtrack Batman, yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. Uh, what else do um, you got? I also got uh, so, some... Uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, it's I'm what it is. Sure, like, yeah. it's, it's it's almost iconic in the way that like the Harry Potter theme or Star Wars is like when you hear the Lord of the Rings music, you know it's Lord of the Rings. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Was, was, was uh, John Williams the uh, composer? I no, don't know. Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. so yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, but but still, uh, uh, John Williams, whatever he does. Yeah. You know, it's iconic, you know. Like, oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah. I would it's actually, actually with the yeah. Like, in terms of just greatness, actually, John Williams should be on this list just because John Williams is the He's modern God's day here. definition of a classical composer, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. You know 100%. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, um, I can't disagree with that. And then really. there's, but then there's, there's some other stuff. I love video game soundtracks. Yeah. And I'm even talking oh, okay. about like old school MIDI shit. Mm -hmm. Mega Man oh, Six. Let's. I was hoping you were gonna say yeah. Mega Man something. Mega dude. Man Fuck Six. Yeah, dude. Six it was particular. Oh, oh, yeah. Six particular man. Okay. Fuck yeah. Six yes, had dude. some of the greatest video game music of all time, and it was just one dude in a closet yep. somewhere on a MIDI controller with a synthesizer, yep. just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and it was amazing. But I mean, like, even if you look at iconic music and you don't want to include, like, but like, look at Mario, like. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what Mario. I was is. just I was just watching a documentary about the like the process of making Mario and the guy who came up with it was just like yeah just, it wasn't a big deal to me. Think, no, it's like again, the biggest shit in the fucking. No, fuck, but like, think about like okay like Deep Purple da 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 yeah. and there's just this asshole. It's like fine like da 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 yeah. uh, whatever uh, iconic now right, you know right. what I mean like yeah and then uh, I had one more oh um, two more actually uh, the soundtrack for Skyrim is a word great like it's truly like hmm. the title track though Joaquin, you know like that's the very yeah yeah like, okay the no, main no, no, theme no, no, is strong but even yeah, though even like the tonal sure. stuff like when you're walking around in a forest and stuff like that like it's you always the, the, exactly yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's good adventure yeah. music right yeah. on. and then one that i listen to when i want to fall asleep uh, because it's just fucking great is actually the witcher wild hunt soundtrack okay and i actually like I know that my list was kind of wild and all over the place, but like I really recommend you listen to the Witcher soundtrack. The for the Wild Hunt, like it was so good, and I want to say it's like the I'm probably wrong here, but it's like the London Philharmonic. Position. Might be. I mean, they got money for that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's the music is so good. Like some of those songs are like in my workout mixes because they get you like fucking amped up and shit. You know I what I mean? It. Like, yeah. It's really good, really emotional music, and if you've ever played any of the Witcher games, they're long as fuck. Yeah. So there's so much music. Right. So I mean, they're not over to you to silence. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's a game about good. playing a game inside a game. Right. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game. Yeah. There's a game within a game within yeah. the game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All of that aside, the Witcher soundtrack is fire. So no, I, you know, uh, I would like to throw one on your list. Uh, Let's go. Castlevania Symphony. Of the Let's Castlevania. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. That is symphonic. Yes, like, dude. 
without it being some fun. Fucking though. goddamn, there is a black guy murder song based on yeah. that. What a horrible what about that curse. Yeah. yeah. That is but yeah, one of the best songs of all time. That's absolutely legit. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I'm not bumping anyone, so I guess I had six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, fuck yeah. It. let's go. So, so, Krishna, what's yours? Well, bringing back the conversation to instrumental guitars. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that's, well, so, um, I'm, I'm oh, going to start off Oh, you just mean my, like cool guy bands. Yeah, cool guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah bands cool. that cool guys. Right. So, so I'm going to start off by saying I'm not going to list or let's not list Joe Satriani, Steve Y, and John Petrucci. Okay, take them off the table. Only, yeah, what, about, what about Paul Gilbert? Ooh. What I mean, about Sean Lane? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, uh, okay. I'm just asking. asking. Yeah, I'm because Steve Y, like... The so this is the big. Yeah, the okay. second you say right. uh, instrumental giants, you automatically think right, of like right. Joe Satriani. We're trying to, try to, try to take yeah. the obvious ones yeah, off the yeah, table. Fair enough. It's like saying Black Sabbath for a doom metal thing. So now my list is going to be, starting with number five, is Marcos... Fogli, or however you say his last name. He's an Italian guitarist who hmm. used to work with JTC. There's this website called Jam Track Central. And then he released his album. His favorite album uh, of mine is uh, uh, There's Hope. It's uh-huh. all very like Satriani plus Petrucci mixed kind of, you know, balladeering and everything. So uh-huh. okay. tasteful licks. It's very emotional play. Very emotional play. Yeah, very right, very right. much like, you know, even the licks have like a story to tell kind of a thing. Sure, right? yeah, definitely. And uh, number two would be uh, Conquering Dystopia. Uh, self-titled. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that is uh, again. I'm I'm mentioning Keith Mero again in this separate list where right. you know uh, this band is uh, him and uh, Jeff Loomis. Yes. So so and far my. Who's a total guitar player? Oh, yeah, it's by just too much. Yeah. yeah, and then it's monster. Even I, yeah, I don't even know. If you don't know who Jeff Loomis is. Yeah. Like you should not be watching. The, the, the man show. tried out for Megadeth as a teenager. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was too young. Yeah. He was too young like, for Megadeth. He was so, too young. And, That's why he didn't. Yeah. Make it. So and then they uh, took the other Nevermore guitarist. Yeah, Broderick. Chris Broderick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Uh, I mean, that was several years later. I know. I yeah, know, yeah, but, yeah, but anyway, so... We've yeah, never brought was... up Nevermore before. Yeah. That's such actually, a weird... That like, is weird, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. All right, so number three would be David Maxim Meeseek, or Meecheek, or however you say that. These names are weird, you know? So, right, anyway, yeah. So uh, this guy, um, I think he's from New Zealand. I'm not sure, but he, he basically started that one-man instrumental thing you know so uh-huh. uh, and then uh, i think that he is the kind he's the definition of the modern prog instrumental sound that's where it kind of began do you know like like approximately like year that his album came out i think uh, uh, like 80s 90s no this was 2010 almost like oh, okay. Quite, oh, okay. these, so, these are recent, relatively recent okay. yeah okay. Okay. the same gotcha. with marcus Wogley as well like he's a very recent artist okay so um because I'm talking more of like a modern instrumental context, you know. I got you. So, gotcha. uh, Bilo is one of his album's names. It's again very quirky. If you if you like Dillinger Escape Plan, then you would like this kind of. You know, I if you're like Harry, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's unlikely that I, was like I do not like Dillinger Escape Plan. And, and, I'm, and I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I love Dillinger. Yeah, Escape it's okay. We still love him. <laughs> yeah. Wait, this I, is the, the only thing that Warlord Radio is 50-50 split on at this point. Right? Right? It's just like. Do you or do you not like yeah, Dillinger yeah, Escape? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, please go ahead. My number two would be uh, Pliny. Uh, Pliny, okay. Australia, Hell Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and favorite album of Pliny is Handmade Cities. Uh, yes. Sonically, it sounds amazing, and uh, dude, you know, unimpeachable yeah. sonically. Dude. Exactly. I yeah. mean, uh, from a guitar player standpoint, it's yeah. just. F- sparkling yep. beautiful dude and, right. and uh, Simon Grove is the producer and the bassist of that yes. album and uh, Troy Wright is the drummer mm-hmm. solid you know everything is just solid it's, and yeah everything is a, in the right place dude, and, and it's so times. much influ- it's, it, it influenced me so much that you know across the horizon my second album is kind of like based on that oh yeah no yeah if you, if you listen to Plain yeah. you listen to that you yeah. can hear the that's, influence that's all there, yeah, for yeah. Sure. I am not and, familiar with this at all yeah like, uh, you should definitely get into Plain it is one of the yeah. dudes par excellence yeah. like Steve I was like yeah he's one okay. of the two guys to yeah. inspire me yeah right. okay. exactly. yeah fair yeah. enough shit and, he's and, a beast that's and, a pretty fucking like bold endorsement yeah, Steve <laughs> he was in Crossroads yeah. he was the devil's guitarist exactly like, so a quick side note even Pliny himself you know he he came up with this op-ed where he was saying that like he did everything DIY, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's why just, just a quick side note about him is that like uh, if, if you if you do anything DIY, it is possible to you know gain success. Right. So, right, right. And now yeah, you indeed. get all the money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you and, know what I'm saying? And my top uh, number one uh, guitarist slash instrumental artist would be Nick Johnston. Nick. G- and God, he, whoa. Yeah. God. 
No, yeah, just shit. absolutely. I'm gonna say, whoa, yeah. hot yeah. take, yeah. yeah. bro. Yeah. Hot yeah. fucking take. Fuck so, Nick Johnson. No, I'm just saying. That yeah. is yeah. Johnson. Hot. Can Canadian <laughs> Johnson's like, fuck <laughs> Craig Martin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, Canadian guitarist Nick Johnston, oh, amazing, amazing guy. Beast. Uh, and, uh, beast. Uh, he got Guthrie Govan to play with him and like. Uh, Brian Beller, who he plays with uh, Aristocrats. Deathlock. Yeah, Deathlock and Aristocrats. Yeah. Even he played for him. And Tasty Licks, it's just like, he plays it. He just plays like a regular Strat, uh, but then it sounds amazingly heavy for some reason, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, just the phrasing of his licks, everything is just... That know, is insane. Uh, and not even, he doesn't even have like a, a humbucker Strat. Yeah. He's a, a single coil Strat, strat like the one that yeah. I've got. It's fucking... Yeah, like, how does that sound like... like you don't I know this, but like my favorite pickup in the world is a fucking humbucker. Just one big fat motherfucker. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the bread and butter, man. Yeah, that's the bread really and butter. Is. That's the funny thing. This guy, he plays on single coins and it sounds like it's coming from a humbucker. I mean, much yeah, like no, the no, one sorry. guy from Obituary does the same thing. Yeah. He plays yeah. a fucking strat, yeah. dude. Exactly. Dave Murray used to do that, you know? Yeah, Dave There's Murray, like, yeah. Since we've been talking about Shout guitar Dave Murray, so I will say, like, the cool thing about the, the Strat is that it's not necessarily the best guitar for any job, but it's a good it's the guitar, best guitar for shape, every job. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's the no, best I'm saying, guitar but it's shape. like, it's the best guitar for every job. Like, the, if you agree. have a Strat, you can literally play, it's the most workhorse yes. goddamn guitar yeah, right. on the planet, man. You've got, do anything. Yeah. You've got fucking five fucking pickup selection spots. Yeah. yeah. Come but on, like, bro. okay, is, is it gonna be sound like a Warwick? No, but can it like emulate a Warwick good enough? Fuck yeah, I can. Like, <laughs> sure. yeah, that style is. We're, it's, it's the gearhead mix. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the it's the yeah, that's a rabbit hole. We don't need to go down right yeah. now. Yeah. That's all. We're good though. That's gonna be much more detailed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, yeah. we were talking about production. Yeah, that's so a whole other. That, yeah, that yeah. could be a two-hour conversation. Okay, right. so yeah. instrumental. Let's go. Okay, okay so my list is kind of all over the place, and it's a little bit of a cheat just because it was really hard for me to come up with the top five of like ones that I like actually jam. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. uh, so, but... Ukulele God, Tiny Tim. Yeah, but uh, for <laughs> me... God. For me coming in at number five is a fairly recent band that I got introduced to called Russian Circles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I yes. just... Yeah. And, uh, Corey loves Russian Circles. It was, They're uh, great. Uh, my drummer uh, was jamming it for me like one late van night mm-hmm. ride home. Josh seems show. like a Russian Circles guy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't surprise me Shout at out all. to Josh Lee, but that's yes. an accurate statement. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beast mode drummer too, by the yes. way. Also, yes. uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, we were jamming it like one night at like three in the morning on a van ride back, and it just stuck with me. It's it's very cool. It's like it, extreme metal, but like cinematic. Chill. Yeah, you know, like, very atmosphere. Yeah, cinematic, yeah. exactly. Atmosphere, soundscape yeah. type yeah. shit. Soundscape yeah, type yeah, shit. So, but it's uh, heavy. It's heavy as fuck. But like, it is yeah, Russian circles. Yes. That's. I'm actually kind yes. of mad. I didn't even think about Russian circles. Yeah, but yeah that's, that's good legit. stuff. Um, and good stuff. Uh, the next pick is. I know it's not technically totally instrumental, but it's mm. Pinkish Black. I uh, love Pinkish Black. Uh, oh, my I yeah, first caught Pinkish yeah. Black at like, a house court festival yeah, yeah. a while so, back. So they are a actually a Fort Worth based duo. Yeah. And it's okay. drums and Heavy the guitar player themes. plays guitar, okay. synth, and he does very sporadic vocals. Mm-hmm. So it's not so often. Every, <sighs> yeah. Well, yeah. Type shit. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, but it's okay. like it's almost like it, it goes between like extreme and also kind of doomy and sludgy. So, and, sure. Yeah. So it's kind of like Bell Witch, but more trippy, occultish type vibe. Well, yeah. Maybe. I would say that. I mean, yeah. uh, that's not uh, inaccurate. You know, yeah. that's a pretty good starting. Because I'm assuming it's like it. longer, more over, you know, yes. expansive compositions. Yes. And, you know, all right. Yes. Soundscape yeah. joints and shit. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, yes. But I, I, I saw them play. Once uh, at the Texas Theater, actually, and uh, they were fucking. Oh, he's a biter, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's biting his um, yeah. So the next one is obvious, and I'll get jokes for it because I joke him, but you gotta go with Ingve Momsteam. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I, I, okay, my the only reason I didn't bring up yeah. Ingve is because I couldn't think of like one specific. Rising album. Force, Rising Force, Force. Yeah, Rising is Force. Is the album. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, 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 uh, that's, that's literally the reason. Yeah. Honestly, he's also with Joe Lynn Turner singing for him is fucking fantastic. Oh, Honestly, he's a great album too. But yeah, yeah Rising Force is the. Uh, the thing yeah. about Ingve, and like I talked mad shit about Ingve because yeah. I want no fucking donuts. Yeah, yeah but he's very yeah. much just. Like I like, look how fucking good I am, guitar yeah. player. But but when he brought neoclassical playing. But look how but what I was about to say, it, like it wouldn't yeah. be look how fucking him. good he is. <laughs> like, <laughs> so so for me that, and then the next one is uh, he's actually a, a legendary filmmaker that transitioned into playing live sets of his music, but John Carpenter. Ah, okay, and, dude, yeah. fuck. 
underrated. Oh, no one fun, knows how good a musician is. I didn't even is, think bro. about Goblin. Go on. Like, honorable well, mention Goblin. What's the spirit? There's no honorable mention. That's my number one. No, uh, ah, okay. No. I'm so sorry. Thanks for ruining it. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, so John, John Carpenter's my number two. And then my number one pick is the Italian prog rock band Goblin. Uh, those two guys together. They're Italian. Yeah. yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. They're also like the nicest fucking dudes on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but just uh, I'm the, thinking of ghoul. The movie we'll work. The, the, the movie work that those uh, go, uh, Goblin and John Carpenter did, and the fact that they're out there still touring to this day and making new music and putting out really good albums True. now. Yeah. Like. Top of the list. Not to mention, uh, a while back, I think it was about a year or two ago, you and I went to go see them do Suspiria live, yeah. which is like something that they do. But then after Suspiria is over, they give you like another set of they original just jam. music. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like it was one of the best concerts, and it was like a gas monkey. Yeah. You know what it I mean? Was but I had a fucking blast. The R. music R. was monkey. so good. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I cannot believe I, I'm pissed off that I didn't say Goblin. So, that's mine. Sam? Sam? All right. So, and this. I would say this is number one, but this is top three for sure. But I mean, this is the first one that comes to mind immediately. I'm going to go. We're talking to bands, right? Artists and bands. Uh, 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 instrumental, yeah. we said. Instrumental. instrumental. Okay, yeah, boom. Yeah. So, Dark Dark Matter Secret. Okay. Dark okay. Matter. Okay. The guy's, the guitarist's name is Dennis Schwartz. It's just one guy. Yeah. Okay. It's very, um, I mean, it's it's like, it's like tech death, but without a vocalist, okay. essentially. But, you know, okay. designed to where it doesn't need a vocalist type. Like, maybe kind of like decrepit birth a little bit. Very actually, yes, okay. excellent comparison. Yeah, guitar wise, it's, it's a lot like Decrepit Birth and a little brain drill. Okay. A little, a little, a little crazy yeah. brain drill. So, so I was talking second. about intervals. Aaron Marshall, huge respect. Uh, he's one of the guys that, like, um, not to get too personal about it, but like, there's a, a time where I was considering not playing guitar anymore. Like, I, I talked about earlier this week yeah. on If You're On My Facebook. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, he I highly recommend the, his Facebook. It is, he was, <laughs> man, it is hot takes, man. Lots of them. But not smart ones, hot yeah. ones. But, um, yeah, there was a point where I was going to give up playing guitar, and I was very disillusioned playing it, and I listened to uh, The Shape of Color. Yes. Shape and color that really was like, God damn, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. I don't know if I can stop playing guitar. So, and, mm -hmm. and the, the way it sounded... And some could argue that it's kind of too clean and tight and compressed. Yeah, I mean, that's just the modern sound. But I'm saying, but for what he's going, that's what he's going for. I also, you know I feel saying? like you have so. more leeway in an instrumental if it's right, more clean. Right, you know, yeah. exactly. And, and produce, like... Especially if you're playing shreddy yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, because like, yeah. you're trying to do, you're trying to make a soundscape and not, like, a song. Or not, that's well, intervals is not right, so much yeah. soundscape yeah. as it is, like, just repetitive, like, riffs and, like, yeah. nice, like, chords with, like, nice yep. leads over, over top of it type so, shit. So, from that album, uh, right. there is that saxophone solo in between. Yes! So, yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very tastefully done kind of a situation. Yeah, where yeah, yeah, It's not, this is the misconception people have about modern prog, right? So, it's modern prog slash instrumental. It's that, oh, it's all, like, chugging on the low, whatever, you know? But but yes, there is some of that. But you know, at the same time, you also that? yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Of, well, that's it's, that's well, good. he's saying with modern prog. Modern prog. Okay. Yeah. Modern prog. So so it's like a, a bands like you know intervals. Animals as leaders. And, yeah. So or, or, you know, they they use especially intervals uses like lots of. Uh, I mean, Aaron Marshall uses lots of melodic ideas right. to kind of go around. The yeah, he's a very he's very yeah. like especially like the very first track on Shape of Color is, is centered around a very good lead melodic yep. line that could be sang yeah. if you really wanted to. Well, that's that's so, actually kind of what my know. point was on, on some of these is like when you're doing prog, one of the reasons that you can afford to be a little bit more clean mm. and concise in things is because uh, essentially the music is the voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. yeah it's got to It has to convey all the yeah. emotions so you need your background as clean as possible so that if you want to get nasty with a guitar line it punches right. out. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, Definitely. Yeah. Quit being nerdy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to start my own podcast. I know. <laughs> fucking blackjack and hookers. <laughs> my own instrumental podcast. Yeah. All right. I don't know. The, I, I, the name of the album escapes me right there. No. I think it's called Powers of Five, but don't quote me on that. Okay. It's by Sean Lane. Oh. I, and he he is, in my opinion, the best guitarist that's ever lived. Yeah. So and, and if you're able to influence Buckethead, then it's yeah. You know, so <laughs> he's it's jazz yeah, fusion that's, stuff. That's it's, a solid boost. Yeah. It's more it's like yeah. 90s he's era jazz More than fusion. Jason Becker. More than Jason. Yeah. To me, and Sean Lane is the best guitarist that's ever. Okay. Lived. He's yeah. he is the best. Okay. Like he can do everything. Everyone else can more do more than Matt Heafy. 
Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, come on. Mad Heafy. He said more than Mad Heafy. Yeah. He threw the curveball on the boy one time. Okay. Yes. To answer your question. I'm going to get hate mail from Trivium. So, that too. Hey, I'll fight all those guys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I will feel... Is the yeah, match not true? I'll fight all better those than things. Fuzzy Tacos. <laughs> but, um, uh, okay, so... What did I just say? I mean, uh, Time back trivia. I got two more. <laughs> we were not talking about trivia. That is not true. Yeah. That is not. <laughs> Craig's being ornery on this yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Fucking. Um, what did I? What did I just say for real? I can't remember. Sean. I'm sorry. Sean, Sean Lane. Sean Lane. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. God Almighty. See, our 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 Go ahead, up a good point with Prague guys. Like, why the fuck did you just use your real name? Like, if you're a sex wizard, well, he's not. Space, he's not really... Call yourself like Moon Goose McQueen or some yeah, shit. Right. Why are you Sean Lane? Well, Sean Lane wasn't a prog guy. He was just an instrumental <laughs> jazz fusion yeah, yeah. guy. So then, why do you right. guys always use your real names? You can literally use any name. Why, why not? not? I'm gonna ask the yeah. same question to Billie Eilish or like you know. Uh, well, that's the wrong question to ask to Billie Eilish. She's an industry plant. That's a whole different conversation. No, I'm just saying like why. And my actual birth name is Carrick. So like, come up again, like, See, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Name, don't, don't yeah, speaking of which, was funny. <laughs> I'm not someone, asked, you. someone asked me the day if my last name was like made up, and that was really my last name. Right? Yeah. They're like, "Is that real?" I was like, "It's to Bo." I was like, "Is that for real?" I was like, "Yes, it's for." Why would who would make that up? Right. Literally one of the like, oldest names in French. I mean, yeah. But like, why, if I had, if I was gonna make up a name, why would I make up a name that's hard to say? Anyways, right. the anyway, point is number we four. We digress. Yeah, like, guys, I digress. Cooler monikers. My name is cool. Yeah. That's the point. Pretty cool. So yeah. fucking um. Last one. No. I thought, did I say four already? I yeah. thought I was say, oh, god damn, okay. So let's go. The guy that composed the toxic. Here's that, I'm gonna, I gotta go. Okay, we're talking artists, so I gotta just say Danny Elfman. Okay. I gotta just say legit. Danny Elfman. Yeah. Because Nightmare Before Christmas, bro, I could it's talk so cool. for a whole nother episode alone about how much I love this. But I mean, I'm not even like, even like, because like, I mentioned Danny Elfman. Not even just Nightmare Before Christmas. Not even well, I mean, yeah, the Christmas. Batman movies. But no, like, Batman like, the Animated Series Bat yeah. had amazing music. Shouts out Kevin Conroy. Shouts shout out, out Mark Hamill, boy. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Shouts out. Yeah. Shouts out, dude. Mad shouts out. Voice acting Fucking royalty, yeah. bro. Yeah, voice Man, acting Tim royalty. Daly is Superman Tim shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, but I'm talking like, Danny Elfman did all of that. Danny Elfman. Sick. Mask of the Phantasm? Yeah. Bro, what? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Let's go. Let's Chucky go. Soul. Chucky Soul. Your Angel of Death awaits. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hell yes. I am surprised that Danny Elfman made it on this list twice. That uh -huh. validates me. That is Sam's fifth. We are done for this episode. It is... There's a lot of dogs on this podcast, and yeah. I apologize for that, but we're still going to let them do what they do. So, no, check us out next time, and we're going to do another list with uh, fucking old T-Bone over here. Yeah, coming up next, uh, Hentai. You're listening to Warlord Radio Podcast. Please hit like and subscribe at the bottom.